running around. <laughs> See, the Bible says if they can bring forth, they're the same kind. A horse and a zebra can bring forth. A horse and a hamster cannot. They're a different kind, okay? And most cases, the kinds are real recognizable to anybody with average intelligence. There might be a few questionable ones in there. Okay, I think that's worthy of research. But the fact that we don't have the answer to every single one doesn't prove that everything is related, like the evolutionist says. You know, in the last 100 years, the Kentucky Derby has gone from an average winning speed of 127 down to 123. Now, even back in the early days, they had some low time turned in. Question. How much money would you guess has been spent on the Kentucky Derby trying to get faster racehorses? Millions and millions and millions of dollars, right? Now, I don't know if they reached the absolute limit of horse speed or not. I suspect they're getting pretty close. I mean, if you really want to win the Kentucky Derby, why don't you breed wings on your horse and fly around the track in 12 seconds? Mm -hmm. My whole point is, sure, variations happen, but they're limited. The evolutionist does not want to admit there are any limits, and that's where the problem comes in. There's a variety of cows in the world, and they might have had a common ancestor. A cow. There's a book you can order chickens from. What kind of chickens do you want to get, kids? Do you want to get red rocks, cinnamon queens, white rocks, cherry eggers, brown leghorns? There's a lot of different kinds of chickens you can get. But look what the book says. The jungle fowl are the original bird from which all varieties and strains of domesticated chickens are derived. Hey, did you know all the chickens had a common ancestor? Guess what it was? A chicken. <laughs> exactly correct. There are eight varieties of bears in the world, and they might have had a common ancestor. I wouldn't argue with that. But it was a bear. Did you know that broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, all, and cabbage all came from a common ancestor? It was a plant. Mm -hmm. The Bible says they bring forth after their kind. Here's what happened, though. James Hutton wrote a book, and people began to doubt the earth was 6,000 years old. Then along came Charlie Lyle, and he wrote a book, and people began to doubt the flood formed the layers. Then along came Charlie Darwin, and people began to doubt the Creator. And by the mid-1800s, the world was in kind of a problem because uh, they didn't think God did it, but they didn't know how it got here, so... Uh, they looked around and said, well, if God didn't make this place, who's in charge? It must be us. That led to the rise of humanism, communism, Marxism, Nazism, socialism. It all ties together. We cover all that on video five. But those same three false teachings are still in your textbooks today. But teaching kids, the earth is millions of years old. We got here by uniformitarian processes. And godless evolution is how it happened. Paul said, Timothy, you be careful about science that is falsely so-called. Evolution is not science. Evolution's a religion. Hitler said, let me control the textbooks and I'll control the state. Professor Wilson from Harvard University said, as were many persons from Alabama, I was a born-again Christian. When I was 15, I entered the Southern Baptist Church with great fervor and interest in the fundamentalist religion. I left at 17 when I got to the University of Alabama and heard about evolution theory. First year in college, destroyed his faith. I suspect that might be what happened to Tom Hanks. I read an article where he was 16 years old. Wrote an, he wrote about how much he loved the Lord, wanted to serve him with his life. What happened, Tom? I've been praying for Tom a lot. I'm going to try to get him saved. I'm sending him some of my videotapes here soon. I don't know why I'm burdened for him, but I just am. Many people go off to college and lose their faith. Scott wrote me a letter from Iowa. He said, Brother Hovind, until I went to college, my faith in God was sound. My college history class helped to destroy that faith. I started to doubt the Bible and God's Word. I even started to doubt Jesus was truly God's Son and that He died and rose from my sins. My best friend showed me your tapes and I was in awe of what I saw. Everything I thought I knew about life was changed. Yay, rescued one. But there are millions more that need rescued. There are kids doing homework right now tonight while we're sitting here and that homework is destroying their faith. 75% of kids from Christian homes who go to public schools are going to lose their faith after one year of college. What's in these books, anyway? What are they teaching our kids? They tell them they've got evidence for evolution. Here's the evidence they give them. Evidence from fossils. Oh, come on. Anybody with half a brain knows no fossil counts as evidence for evolution. None. You bring some bones into the courtroom. Your Honor, see these bones right here? These are the ancestors of everybody today. 
any freshman law student could say, oh, Your Honor, he doesn't know those bones had any kids that lived. And why would you think a bone you found in the dirt can do something animals today cannot do? You know, produce something other than their kind? Fossils simply don't count, folks. No fossils count as evidence for evolution. They say, we've got evidence from structure, molecular biology, development. They say, the process of evolution is by natural selection. There's no scientific evidence to support evolution except things that have been proven wrong years ago. And we're going to cover some of those here tonight. Now, if real evidence exists for that theory, then please show me. I'm not against scientific evidence. I am against lying to the kids. And everything they use to teach that theory to your kids has been proven to be a lie. Evolution is based on two faulty assumptions. Number one, they say mutations make something new. That's never been observed. Number two, they say natural selection makes it survive and take over the population. Now think about this carefully. If an animal evolves a little better than the rest, what must happen to the rest of them in order for this process to work? They all have to die or else the good genes get blended back into the population. Evolution is a religion of death, not life. The question is very simple. Did man bring death into the world like the Bible says, or did death bring man into the world like evolution says? They are polar opposite, and one of them is wrong. This textbook says, Mutations are the original source of variation in populations, by the, shown by the many varieties of roses available. I agree, probably all the roses are mutants from the original rose. I agree with that. That's not evolution. That's a variety of rows. Mutations do not produce any kind of evolution. And anybody that studies biology knows that. Pierre Gross believes in evolution, but he says it doesn't work, folks. It doesn't happen. Here's a five-legged bull. That is a mutation. Notice he did not get any new information. Getting an extra leg is not new information. It's a scrambling of existing information. Doesn't the bull already have legs? So it just made one in the wrong place. That's all. Here's a short-legged sheep. That's a mutant. No new information is added, though. That's a loss of information. And he's the first one the wolf is going to catch. <laughs> go, boys, go. Here comes the wolf. <laughs> oh, Herman didn't make it. There's a two-headed turtle. That's a mutant. It's not ninja, but he's mutant. Okay. <laughs> and he's going to freeze first winter because nobody makes a double-neck turtleneck sweater. <laughs> I've never seen one. See, a mutation is scrambling existing information. It's not new information. If you can scramble up the letters to the word Christmas, you can get all sorts of different words. But you're never going to get Xerox, Zebra, or Queen out of Christmas. The letters aren't available. And scrambling existing gene code will not give you new information. This textbook shows the kids a four-wing fly. Look what it says here now. Normal fruit flies have two wings. This mutant has four. This rare mutation, like most mutations, is harmful. Watch this carefully. It says, beneficial mutations are the raw material for natural selection. Uh, excuse me, teacher. Why don't they give an example of a beneficial mutation? Why did they show us a bad one and tell us about the good ones? You see, beneficial mutations are pure imagination. But they don't exist in reality. You have to imagine that they happen. Oh, wow, it must have been a bunch of them, too. Oh. Nobody ever shows one. 